Healing Bees, I'm Suki and welcome to the Beehive. In today's video, we are going to be talking about 11 non-sewing sewing notions. Now I have done four other videos that have done very, very well, hundreds and hundreds of comments, and it took me a little while to go through most of them, but I was able to wrangle up another 11 that I hadn't even thought about. So all of these ideas today are coming from viewers just like yourself who left amazing detailed comments. If you see something here that you haven't seen in the other videos or this one, please do me a favor and let me know in the comments. Maybe we'll make yet another one of these non-sewing sewing notion videos. And without further ado, let's get started. The first one is actually kind of a tag on from a previous video. I was talking about using clear saran wrap to cover over your projects just for the evening so that you can keep dust off of it. I'm in Florida, it is very dusty. Plus we have a dog, so there's always either a dust or dog hair everywhere. So what I thought was great though, was there was a lot of good feedback and several people mentioned this, that they use these little shower caps. You can get like, I don't know, a million for 10 bucks from Amazon. I'll find one and have a link in the description. Um, I didn't even know we had these in the house. My daughter had a bunch from like when she dyes her hair. So I'm not really sure when she bought them. Um, I guess maybe on my account, I didn't know it. <laughs> but anyways, we have like a ton of these, which is really great. They're just the travel size shower caps. And honestly, if you just get a few of them, maybe you can share them with, you know, a hundred of your closest friends. But once you just get one or two of them, it's not like you're going to need to throw these away. Um, you can use them over and over again. So I love these little fabric bowls. I made this fabric bowl and this is just like, I use these a lot. So I just, you know, throw my scraps in there and then just cover over top of it. I will say that you are limited by the size. Like I sometimes keep my work, my projects in like baskets and this did not fit over the basket. So do keep in mind that you are restricted by the size of the shower cap. The next one came up a lot when I was talking about storing zippers and I had a couple other ideas, but this one was recommended by several people. And that is these little, they, uh, at the dollar store, they were called book rings. I've seen them called split rings, but basically it's just a little metal ring that has a hinge to it. And then it overlaps to lock in place. Now, what's really nice about these is there is lots of space to put zippers. And, and my first thought was it would go on the outside hole of the zipper pull, but no, it's the inside hole of the zipper pull. Say that fast five times. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just slip these on there. You may want to sort your zippers by color or size or whatever, however you want to. That's entirely up to you. This is just an example. But yeah, I got to say, this is really nice. If I had space to hang things up, which I don't in my in my room, um, I would probably hang these up like as I was using them or maybe just to keep them organized. But all of my zippers go in a big plastic tub. However, I still think this is a great idea, a great way to keep your zippers organized. In some of the other videos, we talked about how to hold patterns down like fabric weights and a couple of people mentioned this. And so I went out to the dollar store and I got myself some posters. These are actually going to go really perfect in my living room and they were only $1.25 each, which is really cool. Um, but I, I liked this idea because I was like, okay, that's, you know, it takes a, a small footprint. You don't have to have a big box. Um, some of my other suggestions required a little bit more space. So I kind of like the idea of this. So we're going to test out this theory. We've got our pattern piece and we're just going to lay these down. And yeah, sure enough, it works really good. Now I was thinking, like, especially with a smaller project like this, it might be nice to have the rotating map. So we're going to go ahead and test it out. Okay. Yep. Did a good job. I have to say that the Coasters are a win and maybe you've got some nicer ones. These are just good enough though. I can't imagine needing anything nicer, especially for your sewing space. Now I'm going to go ahead and dedicate these to my living room. However, they had some really cute ones that had fun sayings, but I mean, seriously, you could get ones that match your sewing room too. This next non-sewing sewing notion idea came from one of the viewers and I really liked it. We've talked about several ways to dispose of your used uh, sewing machine needles, but this one 
is kind of multi-purpose. You can use it to get rid of a lot of things. So after every six to eight hours or so of a needle, it is time for it to go away. Um, again, there's other videos that I've made that show what else you can do with them, but this particular portion is just talking about once it's officially ready to go to the graveyard, you can just put it in here. So I like the big container, nice big holes. And then you can also use this for like bent, bent pins, you know, that sometimes happens. And even with the large head pins, they fit in there. And then the last part that the, the uh, viewer mentioned was that you can use this for your rotary cutters. And I like that. So you can even, you don't even have to take the lid off. There you go. You can just take the side portion off. And now you have a storage container that, I mean, this would take quite a while to reef, you know, fill all the way up, but this is just a nice, you know, it has a small footprint. You can put it in one of your drawers in your sewing room and it's going to hold all those sharp things uh, with no problems. Once you're finally ready to throw this away, it's not that big of a deal. I bet you won't even use another Parmesan cheese can by the time you fill this up. Maybe that's a challenge. What do you think? Sticking on the theme of needles, I thought this was a very clever idea. Nobody else had mentioned this, but one viewer. And what she does is once she's used her needles, but let's say that she used it for maybe one project, but she doesn't want to put it back in here. So this is her storage device, kind of like the in-between before it goes to the graveyard. <laughs> so this is a really cool idea. These are those little dental picks. Um, my dentist constantly recommends these over floss. And really, I'm not going to go into you how to use these, but um, they're really clever. But we're going to actually just kind of get rid of these for now. And we're more focused on the little plastic container. Now, this was from the dollar store. They have real ones, like the real brand, and they're about half the size. I like them. I keep mine in my purse. The one I, I went to go look at mine, and mine's pretty worn out. I've had it for maybe like two years, and that's what I keep in my wallet. So this from the dollar store, though, I thought was really cool. And it's large. So here's what she does. She takes when she's finished with her needle and she has used it and she remembers what it is because sometimes that's a problem we forget. Even though the needles are color coded and there's a color coding chart that you can go to Schmetz needles and you can see what the needle is and even what size it is. But let's just say that you knew exactly what it was. Now that you have this little container, you now have like a temporary home for it. And this are large, this one here is large enough where you can even write rate on it. Maybe just embroidery size 12 or whatever, or size 11 or whatever it is that you're going to be using it for. And maybe you can keep a couple of them in there. And now at least, you know, like, okay, these aren't ready to go in the trash yet. There's still maybe a little bit of life in there. So yeah, I really totally digged this idea. Again, with sticking with the needle idea, a lot of people mentioned empty Tic Tac containers. I haven't personally purchased Tic Tacs in so many years that I actually had to go to the store and buy a container and then I emptied them out and I gave them to my daughter. <laughs> but anyways, I have to say very clever because the opening is plenty large enough. You could probably even put your old pins in there too, like a flower head pin. I'm not sure that you, yeah, I mean, I guess it comes out uh, easily because that was another thing. Somebody said that you could use this to bring like a small amount of straight pins to and from class. So I thought that was a clever idea too. But if it's time for you to officially retire or get rid of your sewing machine needle, you can just pop it in there and you can start yourself a nice little collection. Though I have to say now having just done that, I feel like you could treat the the uh, Tic Tac container, the same as the dental pick plastic case. You might be able to, you know, take the wrapping off, clean it up and actually label because there's no reason that you couldn't use this as kind of the, the kind of in between container for before it needs to go to the trash. Parchment paper to the rescue. Once again, I got to tell you, I think I could do three videos just on what you can do with parchment paper in the sewing room. There were so many suggestions, but I was trying to find things that I hadn't really heard about before. And this one I thought was really clever. So the idea is that you're going to use the parchment paper as a leader for your stitching. So let's go over to the sewing machine. I'm actually just going to cut a couple of like one inch pieces. Uh, one and a half inch pieces. So I'm just going to take these two little pieces and we're going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to explain how to use these 
to help our stitches at the beginning and the end. Oftentimes when you're beginning your stitch, the material wants to get sunk into the throat plate. Uh, there could be many reasons why this is happening, um, but sometimes it's just unavoidable. And a lot of quilters will use a small piece of fabric called a leader and they'll stitch the leader and then continue stitching onto the fabric and then later on clip the leader and throw it away. So this idea came in and I thought it was really good because the idea is to use parchment paper for your leader. So we're just going to fold a tiny piece in half. We sink we lower our presser foot, sink our needle, and we begin stitching. And then you butt the end of the fabric with the end of that leader, and you continue stitching without skipping a beat. Now when you get to the other end, if you want to backstitch, that's fine, but quilters tend not to backstitch. And what they would do is use the little ending piece. And we're just gonna feed that right in. And we didn't miss a single stitch problem. Like we don't have any stitch problems. We didn't miss any stitches. And then I will say like typically what you'll do is you'll just clip this away. But the viewer who suggested this said she just tears her away, hers away. And look at that, it's very cool. I Again, I love when you all give me these kind of suggestions. I never would have thought to use parchment paper for that. Press and seal. I'm telling you, you all had so many great ideas about what to use this for in addition to cutting the fluffy fabric, but um, this was really cool. I didn't think about this. And then again, that's kind of what this, these videos are all about, things that we didn't think about ourselves, and so we're sharing them as a community. So there's two things I'm gonna show you actually today with the press and seal, although there was probably 20 different suggestions. Again, I could do a whole video just on press and seal and what you can do in your sewing space. But the first one I thought came in very clever and let's just grab a bunch here. And I will say one of the things a lot of the the viewers mentioned is that you can reuse this depending on how you're using it and which application. But in this case, I probably wouldn't reuse it. But really what we're gonna do is use it to design our quilting template. So even if you're not a quilter, even if you're a bag maker and you need to do some quilting. So I've just got a piece of batting sandwiched between two pieces of fabric. I've laid my press and seal down. Now we're gonna seal it to the table. And then you can do whatever drawing you want. And I mean, if you're gonna do free motion quilting, you can just have some fun. If you have a stencil to follow, whatever it is you know that you want to do, as long as you get it onto this press and seal, let's just say we're gonna do some hearts. As long as you do this press and seal, then you go to your sewing machine and you would just follow those marks. And then what's best is once you've stitched it, this rips right off. So here, I'm gonna come right back. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this and then I'm gonna come right back. Okay, so now I have stitched this. Just, I wanted to show you how peeling it off is nice and easy. And sure enough, it just comes right off. I might get in there with a straight pin. Yep. Okay, very good. I am so excited I learned Another trick, what to do with the press and seal. Now, while we're on the subject of press and seal, I have to show you another viewer suggested this, which is if you're working, especially if you go to and from classes, I mean, I guess she keeps her press and seal right in her travel case when she goes to, to sewing class, but let's say that she's working on placement of something, um, maybe applique, whatever it is, and so she can use an applique press sheet, but somebody else mentioned that they use these plastic placemats from the dollar store or wherever. I mean, this one costs a dollar and a quarter and you can use these to help you lay out patterns. So let's say you're gonna lay out your pattern, whatever it's going to look like. Get your press and seal. And you want a large enough piece that's gonna cover the project. 
And man, sure enough, it does work. I thought maybe it would like move things around, but it really didn't. Actually, it held the fabric in place. And now I'm able to lay this down. And like I said, one viewer mentioned that she does this on an applique press sheet, whereas somebody else mentioned that they do it on a placemat. And so I went ahead and did it on the placemat. And then now you can just take this, put it into your sewing case, and you can go back home or to and from class and work on it. I suppose this would be really cool too if you do hand sewing and you kind of want to just keep things in place. But again, I'm telling you that press and seal has so many uses in the sewing room. This may be one of my favorite suggestions from the viewers, and it is to use jar grippers underneath your foot pedal. So, you know, just to give you an idea, as you're sewing, your foot sometimes kind of pushes the foot pedal. Again, there's lots of options for this. We have some other suggestions in previous videos. I've even had friends say that they put their foot pedal this way and they just gently tap at the very top of it versus keeping it in the traditional manner where you rest your heel and then you push your toes. However, I gotta say, this was really cool. She uses these jar grippers, and we have these everywhere in my house because if you've watched videos from me before, you know that I have had surgery in both of my wrists. I have arthritis, and so anything that's gonna help aid me in opening a jar <laughs> or a bottle is gonna be my friend. So I gotta tell you, this is really a cool idea, and we have these in the house already. So I went ahead and put one under, and so here's without. And then here's with. So like, I mean, it's moving just a little bit, but maybe a larger one and or put two. And that way, let me push this on the side so you can see. Now this way, the entire four corners are touching the jar grippers, which are touching the ground. And now it's not moving, like really. There we go, now it moved. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was such a clever idea. I do think though that once I use these on the floor next to my feet, I would probably dedicate these to the sewing room, but I literally just bought these from Amazon, so I'll have a link in the description if you wanna get these. It was like four of them for like, I don't know, four or five dollars. So yeah, jar grippers to hold your foot pedal. The next idea is using one of those plastic Place mats. Now you can get these also at the dollar store, so you're not spending a lot of money on it just to cut it up. But what I use mine for, I use it for all kinds of things, but one of the things I use the most is I use it to create templates. So you have a pattern piece that you know you're going to be using a lot over and over and over again. And instead of using that piece of paper, you can just trace around the outside of your pattern piece. Of course, you'd want to label what it is with a pair of just craft scissors, not your fabric scissors. You would cut around. And what's nice is you have a lot here. So if you've got, I mean, if you've got, a, a let's say it's an applique project that you are gonna be using more than once, if you're only going to use it once, then don't don't worry, don't bother. But if you're if it's going to be something that you're going to use over and over again, like this heart right here, then for sure it's going to be a good use. And then what you can do is you could just transfer the heart, make sure it's you know whatever the right side is, and you could just transfer that with a fabric marking pen. What's nice about this too, is you'll be able to get more usage out of your material as opposed to just folding this and maybe only getting maybe three, but for sure two. But now you'll be able to pivot and trace in this direction. And so forth. And then you would just cut out your Parts. The next is very interesting. I saw a few people say that they use a toothbrush to help them thread a hand sewing needle. And though I had no clue what they were talking about, I really couldn't understand it. After a little bit of research, I was able to find a couple of blog posts from the 2000s on, on this topic. And basically what it is, is you're going to lay the thread so that it is in line with the bristles, and then you're going to 
place your the eye of the needle, which I have to say works much better if it's a large eye needle, and you would just lay it directly over top of the thread, and then you would use a secondary needle to pull it up. Now I did find that it worked better with a soft bristle and a medium bristle, but the hard bristle, it just didn't seem to work at all. So let's go ahead and see if we can get it to work. Okay, I can see that it's in the eye of the needle already. I'm gonna tilt this to the side. I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah, you can kind of see right there, but we're going to, well, and it popped out. But what we're gonna do is as soon as you can see that it's in the eye of the needle, you use your secondary needle. See, it went in that time real good. Use the secondary needle to pull through. And there, can you see it? And it's it has, actually threaded the eye of the needle. So very clever. So that was the soft bristle. Let's go ahead and try the medium bristle. I also really searched for a toothbrush that just had like straight across bristles, but you know, nowadays everything's all like ergonomic and <laughs> whatever. So like this is dentist approved, uh, but uh, it, it's not needle threading approved. So what I'm trying to do is find the straightest place, which really is does not exist. But right here in the center, there's kind of a an up a, like an uphill curve. So I'm going to kind of use that, and I'm just going to lay the thread over top of these bristles. With the eye of the needle, I'm going to push it right over top. All right, I can see that it went in. Actually, it did it maybe better than the, the soft bristle. I can see that it's in. And then we go back with our secondary needle and pull it out. Now, I also want to say that I'm not doing this with my glasses, which is a little tricky, um, I, but I kind of wanted to challenge myself and see if it works. So there you go. That is how you thread the eye of a needle with a toothbrush. Well, sewing bees, I sure hope you enjoyed today's video and maybe learned at least one new thing. If you found this video helpful and useful, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, be sure to subscribe, but most importantly, share this with just one other sewing friend that you think would find this information valuable. And until I see you next time, I hope you have a creative day. Bye-bye.